The good news is that I'm back after months. The bad news is that this video is not a technical video. On the other side, the good news is that this is the time I can tell you what I've been cooking in the past few months that I just disappeared. I'm not completely, you know, many of you have been in contact with me on uh, Udemy or LinkedIn or many other places, but basically I disappeared from the face of YouTube for quite a while, focusing on work and at the same time creating another course. And this course is ready. Yes, I got into Power Apps and I created the course called Power Apps Crash Course. This is a long course, although it's called Power Apps Crash Course. It's around 13 hours of lecture. I don't know who in his right mind calls a 13 hour course a crash course, but regardless, we don't want to go there. Anyway, uh, the course is ready. Let me show you its features. The course is available on Udemy. Still, it's not indexed properly, so probably I need to put a link there so you can go straight to the course, unless you specifically look for this title to find it. The course is just released. But I would like to talk to you about the content of this course. The course content is divided into six sections. First one is introduction, which is absolute beginner's guide, people that they don't even know what Power Apps is or they have just heard the name, then they just want to start to get into this platform. This is just orientation. If you are familiar with the Power Apps, even a little bit, you can comfortably skip this chapter. Regardless, this course is presented as learn how to build apps fast. And don't let this statement fool you. I mean, build the apps fast, not learn fast. This is a long course and requires a lot of commitment to get there to call yourself developer. And you heard it right. This course is for developers. I don't mean you have to be developer to start this course. And I personally believe that if you are not actually a developer, probably you can grab this course a lot better than people with development background. Because as old school developers, we had to unlearn lots of things that they are practiced differently in the modern environment. It was a challenge for myself. But regardless, this course is aiming to make you Power Apps developers. And when we look into Microsoft Power Platform, the scope of this course is going to be Power Apps, Power Automate, and Data Connectors. We are not going into the details of Power Automates, but we will learn how to create Power Apps that utilizes features inside Power Automates, and we package them together and we deploy them together with all their dependencies. And for the people that are already a little bit familiar with Power Apps, let me make it clear for you that I will be using only Canvas apps. There are lots of templates, ready-made wizard style apps that you can use using Power Apps, but I'm staying away from all of them. To me, Power Apps is Canvas app, everything from blank. And I strongly believe, and you will see it by the end of this course, that if you learn this one right, and you follow some certain standards that Microsoft preaches, after this course, you can comfortably go to Power Apps and use any one of these templates to create your apps quickly. Then you apply all the knowledge that you have learned here and go and customize them to the extreme. Basically, you save time by using these while you use this knowledge to get the extreme flexibility while you are using these templates. And I promise you, this course gives you all the knowledge that you need to do that, although we don't even touch the templates. But regardless, we start this course by UI elements. We want to do everything visually. So every UI element that is available inside Power Apps, of course, the important ones. And by important, I mean the ones that probably you need a bit of explanation. And, I, and unimportant ones are the ones that you can look into that and you figure it out yourself based on whatever you learn in this course. These are the controls that we cover as simple controls. And these are the complex controls that we cover inside this course. Although I have a lot of focus on combo box, edit form, and vertical gallery. By the end of this course, you will be dancing over these three controls. Because frankly speaking, more than 90% of the projects that you have, you will be using at least one of them, if not all. 
And for the people that are already familiar with the style of my teaching, I am not the kind of person going through the demo and asking you to follow. For every demo, I have a diagram that explains what you are going to do. And then we go step by step following the diagram while building the application. So at any moment, you have a clear understanding of where you are and what we are doing rather than blindly following me and building the solution that you need to spend quite some time to make the connection in your brain and make sense of it. After designing the UI elements, I want to show you how you can bring your app to life. So basically functionality. We will learn how to add code and expressions to our project. After understanding how the UI works, we will learn how to bring our controls to life by adding code and expressions to it. So basically, this is the time that we actually make those controls work for us. We learned about UI elements, and now we want to show you how you can use those UI elements to display items from an array, from a collection, or from a data source on your screen. We will show you how you can insert, update, or delete items. Even for delete, we will show you how you can use a confirmation dialog box. We will show you how you can filter the data, either for rows or columns. We will see how we can make calculated fields. We also learn about aggregate functions, like average, max, min, sum. And finally, to marry all those UI elements with all these logics, there is a lot to cover to fill the gaps between them. And this is this last tiny line that they say devil is in details. After we learn about functionality and bringing the controls to life, we will learn how we can use connectors to connect our Power App solution to the outside world. Now our application is gonna be a little bit more than just a standalone app on your phone or smart device. We will learn how we can connect it to Microsoft Excel, to SharePoint, to email, or to Power Automate Flow. With Excel, we learn the basics. With SharePoint, we take it a little bit more advanced, working with different data types, working with limitations, playing around with the UI and making it fancier we will also learn inside SharePoint that how we can customize the built-in forms that are inside SharePoint using Power Apps. Email is just to show you the core functionality of the connectors and how easily we can use any connector to anything that is available out there. And finally, Power Automate is the brain of your application. Basically, if you were using the UI and the business layer, your business layer is now the Power Automate, and we will see how we can connect them together. We will also learn how we can put them together as one single unit or one single solution and deploy it, which comes in the last section. In the last section, although it's a short section, we will learn about security, how we can secure Power Apps, how we can provide permission for the other users to do that, because it's a little bit more than just adding one user to one single app and say, okay, you're authorized to use it. Power Apps is not as straightforward. Then we will learn how we can package our solution and deploy it to another environment. And yes, you heard me right. It's about environments. Dev, QA, UAT, prod, exactly the same way, even in Power Apps, we can build the app and we can transfer the app from one environment to another one. And we will go through it. During this course, we will create a new environment and package and deploy our Power App with all its dependencies, including Microsoft Power Automate Flow, to another environment for UAT or production. And this is not the end. As I promised, I'm going to give you one free coupon for the course. It's for everyone, but it's available only for two days from the date that this video is released on YouTube. So the course code is here. You can see it on the screen. And just go to the course. The course link will be right under this video in the comments section. You can click on it. You get there when it asks you for the promotion code. Use the code that you can see on the screen, and the course is going to be free. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next week in another video, and we will go back to our weekly YouTube video routine. Thank you for staying with me, and see you next week.